Okay. I'm gonna actually come over there for a little bit. You won't believe it, but we are too diametrically opposed. Be it theologically. <laughs> theologically, <laughs> diametrically opposed people right here. But fortunately, both of us have beards, so we're okay. Now, this is Ray Comfort, and I'm Bruce Gleason. Everybody know who, who's, uh, who Ray is. He's part of the Living Waters. We kind of talk a little bit at the beach. But not occasionally. A I'm not a man? But not a man. Banana Man, right, the old Banana Man. He, he He's uh, changed his ways, right? He he denies now that uh, banana will fit in oh, your no, hand Oh, no, we've got a brand new movie coming oh, out. Oh, brand new, okay, well. And it's called The I Fruit. don't have any movies. And it's the truth about Banana Man. You have a lot more story. money to promote your theology than my atheism, <laughs> that's for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, um, I'm actually going to ask him 13 questions, lucky 13. And this is not a debate, you know it's not a conversation. You know where that 13 comes no, from? No, what, the Ouija board? No, no, it's how many people were at the Last Supper with Jesus. There was I thought it was 12. Yeah, no. 13. Mary Judas, Judas was there. Judas was 12 there? 12 disciples and What Jesus. about the lady? I thought that Mary disciples. Magdalene was there. 12 disciples. The no, guy with the really long hair, he's a Mary, you, Mary, you, Mary you right? You need to get Anyway, <laughs> anyway, we're, we digress. So I'm not going to, uh, this is not a debate, I'm not going to ask him any questions after I ask the question, individual questions, except that if he uh, is not answering the question, that's our agreement, right? Yeah, Okay. Sure. So I'm going to actually put this right here, and I'm going to sit over there, and you can talk to me and see if this falls, you're going to have to adjust it for me, right? Okay. Okay. Now, you can look at me, it's, just pretend that's not there. So, this will probably take, I don't know, five minutes or something. They're pretty quick. It depends how, how long you answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, first question. Why, after debating for thousands of years, are we no closer to agreeing which God is real or even if there is any gods at all? There are millions of gods. If you study Hinduism, you'll know that. Um, the first of the Ten Commandments says, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. So there are other gods. Man has a propensity to make up false gods to suit himself. Every atheist is actually a... An idolater, his image of God is erroneous. The God they don't believe in, atheists don't believe in, doesn't exist. Anyway, there's only one creator. Many gods, but one creator. And there's no debate there. I know who that God is. But the rest of us are not agreeing to everything. So I guess the answer to the question is, why are we still, as a, as a world community, still arguing about which God is real? I'm not arguing. You're the one that's doing the arguing. <laughs> why do you think other people are arguing? I don't know. Uh, it's no. just that man disagrees about everything. Politics, religion, everything man puts his hand to, he disagrees because we've got a sinful nature. We normally only see our own point of view and nobody else's. Number two, why over 500 years has science continually ruled out God but never ruled him in? I don't know what you're talking about. That is just such an untrue statement. Those. It's a question. It's not a yeah, statement. Yeah, well, our... Yeah. our, um, our foundation for science comes from godly men, Isaac Newton and others who believe in God's existence. Einstein was not an atheist. He had his own belief, his own image of God, one that didn't say you shall not commit adultery. But uh, why do you think science Now let me just say why Einstein, see if you can figure why Einstein didn't like the God who said you shall not commit adultery. Because why, he is, a, he is adulterous. Just, can you stick to the question? Why do you think that uh, we've never proved God scientifically? It, God's proven scientifically and just looking around you, look, if, if I said to you as we sit in this huge building, I see no evidence of a builder, you'd think I was crazy. Okay. Number Hang three. on a minute, let me answer the question. We don't want to get through yeah, these no, too you're quick. Not, you're not going to answer that Yeah, question. yeah, I'm answering it. I'm Number answering. three. Let me finish it, Bruce. Why do believers? Bruce, you know, I'm going to give you... Five minutes is going to go into an hour I'm going to give you evidence for God's existence. Okay. It's utterly without the realm of possibility for DNA to make itself. Okay. It's Number coherent three. information. And so number you just three. have to look at DNA to know that God exists. That's the intelligent design. Let's go to number three. We get out of this one real quick. Too hot why, in the kitchen. Why do God believers use transparently invalid arguments to justify their beliefs? You know what a straw man is? That's a straw man. We don't use invalid arguments. We use science to prove God's existence. A building cannot build itself. A painting cannot paint itself. That's a false equivocation. To explain, explain to me that. It's a, it's a false equivocation. You're equivocating one thing with another that are totally different. You can't. Re we know what a builder is when it builds a building. We don't know what a builder is when we build something we don't know. You're assuming, and it's a builder. 
we're, uh, I'm assuming it could be nature. So nature could have made this building. No, that's another false equivocation. <laughs> Come okay, on. Number four. You've got to get to see. Number Let me four. answer these questions. Number four. <laughs> Why is there not even one argument for God that all fair-minded people can agree to? All intelligent people are going to listen to exactly what I say and agree with. That's a dumb thing to say. All uh, intelligent people agree with me. It's not a saying. It's a question me. for you. Look, the atheist, atheism is the dumbest, most stupid insane we're not talking about atheism we're talking about can agree to that means that all religions can agree to at least one god is it is that possible there's only one creator all religions believe in one creator except Hindus. i can tell where this is going if you can try to stick to the question i really well you want me to say what you want me to say i want you to say your opinion okay let me say not going into other areas outside the question how can i get my opinion if i don't do that Okay, tell me what you want me to say for the next question. Why does geography determine which god people worship and not something else, such as intelligence? Explain what you mean. Well, in other people, in other places of the world, there's a vast majority of people that believe in one particular religion or god than other places of the world. So it's geographically disposed that people believe in particular gods. If there was a real true god, wouldn't he reveal themselves equally throughout the entire world? No. He wouldn't. Oh no, he says. So that means he's only revealing it to those. Let countries? me answer your question. Whether you live in Israel, New Zealand, Australia, or China, God says, if you seek me, you will surely find me if you search for me with your whole heart. There is a massive revival in China. Millions and millions of people are coming to Christ in, in atheistic China at the moment because people are calling upon the name of the Lord. So that's. Um, but that it's doesn't just, answer all other parts. If there, if if God was influencing people to go to Christianity in China, wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be influencing Iraq or Iran to go to uh, Christianity? He may be. I don't know. I can't speak of the mind of God. Okay. Number six. Why is there less well-educated people are more likely to find God than educated people? You know, education tends to puff people up. The more knowledge you have, the more proud you can become. The proudest people I know are in universities. There are a lot of dumb people in universities with a lot of knowledge, and it puffs them up. And the Bible says God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. That's why the Bible says the poor people heard Jesus gladly. He didn't go to the rich. He didn't. Well, go you're to the just proud. supporting the question then that less educated people believe yes. in God because they're not proud. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, usually, yeah. Universities are full of puffed up people that are arrogant. Okay. Number seven, why are the most prayer, prayerful countries the most deprived and the most unsuccessful, meaning that they're, they're, uh, they don't have economies? If God was there, wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that God would be helping all these people Could that were specific? the worst verses? Well, let's say uh, the poorest countries in the world. Such as? Why isn't God? Well, uh, any, pick any country in Africa, for instance. You mean that? Third world country? Third world country. Why do yes. we call them third world country? And who's the That's first? That's not the question. The question is that <laughs> if these people are more prayerful than other countries that are more successful, isn't God purposely saying as a whole that these people that pray a lot more than these other people, they're not answering their prayers? I don't know what prayers God answers. How would I know that? So you would think God would allow this injustice then? Well, as I mentioned before, before you turn the camera on, there's the permissive will of God and the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is when God's kingdom comes to this earth and God's will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, as it says in the Lord's Prayer. At the moment, we live in the permissive will of God, where God allows atheists to do their own things. Pol Pot, um, Stalin, Lenin. You're Lennon. equating atheists with Pol Pot. Yeah, well, that's he was an atheist. Very nice. That's not a false equivocation. But it doesn't matter. He was an atheist, and, and he allowed Hitler. God was believers a, did a lot of bad things, Hitler too. Hitler was a believer in God. He created his own image of God and then slaughtered him. Millions of people because of his idolatry. So God allows these things in his permissive will. You can do your own thing. You can go out and rape women, do what you want. You might get in trouble with the law, but God will allow that, but he'll catch up with you on Judgment Day. That's what does that have to do with the poor people that are praying more than the rich people that are not praying? Well, I don't know what it's got to do. I don't know who's praying in, in Africa and who's not praying in Africa. And I don't know what you Well, you can take thoughts. any study and say it's, uh, how many people pray. I mean, Muslims pray five times a day. I don't think any Christians pray five times a day. How do you know that? Well, most Christians, I would assume, don't go down on their knees. and. You don't you know. go down on your knees. Look, I pray without ceasing, as the Bible says. Of I'm course. continually in prayer. Okay. okay. Why do God believers indoctrinate their children instead of allowing them to decide for themselves once they're grown up. What are you talking about? Just like the question says, it's a pretty simple question. No, it's not. Explain what the question is. That parents indoctrinate their children into religious 
Well, circles. can I can I just see if you and think before this is true? they're old enough to decide which religion they want to go to? Let me tell you, you might use this word. I, I tell my children it's wrong to lie, and steal, and kill people. Is that indoctrination? Because that's what Christians do. We teach the children. Ten well, most people do that, of course. But I'm talking about religious. So what do you mean indoctrination? What are you talking about? Can you be specific? Well, can you imagine what indoctrination is in no, your own I mind? No, I can't. I don't know what you mean. Be specific. I'll just move on to the next question. Okay. Why are God believers so often certain about things they cannot possibly know are true, such as what happens after they die? Of course we can know. Well, I wouldn't be a Christian I think, if I didn't don't know. Don't you know the difference between belief and knowledge? I think that they yes. can believe, but uh, yes. no, I, I don't think knowledge comes into okay, that. Okay, if you got, put your hand on an electrical circuit and got a, a shock like 240 volts went through your body, would you know or believe? Of course, no, that's a personal experience. Okay, so that's what happens when you become a Christian. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. God transforms you on but the inside. But the, the difference is that the evidence is not there. The evidence of a it's shock is not for you. Is there. It is for us. God, no, no, God the, reveals the shock, himself. The shock is there for everyone, but the belief is not there for everyone. It's not That's belief. the difference. Look, there's a difference between intellectual belief and trust. I trust God implicitly. I trust his word. His word tells me it's an instruction book for humanity. We know what's going on in the world and what's okay. going to happen I'm tomorrow gonna go to and 10. what happens. <laughs> okay. Why do God believers rely on faith when faith cannot distinguish true ideas from false ones? For instance, if you believe something is true, it could be false. True. <laughs> How do you know that your religion is, is not true simply because of your anecdotal experience of I've seen oh. you exercise incredible faith during our lunchtime here. Do you know that? I, I just call it being a human. I don't call it faith. I think you've just exercised incredible faith. Faith to me is, is too religious. 